Hey, do you know what time it is? Well, I do. <laughs> Look what came in today. Yep, it actually is a few days early because I wasn't actually expecting it until uh, I think Tuesday or Wednesday of uh, next week. So super stoked. However, UPS almost let me down and I'll tell you all about it. Let's get into it. So I didn't actually buy this until a couple of days after the actual Galaxy Unpacked event because I really wasn't sure if I wanted to upgrade. But when I checked the trade-in values for my current Galaxy Watch 5 Pro, they were given like 250 bucks. So this watch right here cost me $3.55. Yes, like I said before, $3.55. How could you not take that deal? That would be crazy. It also came with a second band, which I didn't even know they were doing. This was a bonus. So not only do I have the band come with the watch, I've got an extra band that came with the order. So pretty stoked. So my wife and I actually ordered the watch the same day. She ordered a 40 millimeter. I ordered the 44 millimeter. I like the bigger watch face. She actually thought the watch face on her 5 Pro is a little too big. So she wanted to get a little smaller. And hers came in yesterday. Mine was supposed to be delivered yesterday, but I looked on my UPS app and it's like, due to unexpected events, we can't deliver your watch. So I'm like, great. But fortunately they got it here today. So we're gonna get this unboxed, go over some of the features, get it paired up with my phone, and we're gonna check it out. So let's get to it. Hey, welcome back, I'm Robert. Thanks for tuning in and all the support on the channel. So if you've enjoyed the content on my channel, please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe because we want the old YouTube algorithm to know that you like it. And you'll want to hit that bell icon because I have a few videos coming up here in the next uh, week or two for some other devices that I have purchased. One being the Samsung Galaxy Tag. Uh, that's the second gen. And we're going to get those set up and check those out. So let's get this unboxed and get it set up and go over the features. I do like how Samsung does their packaging actually. You know, they make it real simple with these little strips here you just take off. And the moment of truth, the unveiling. So I chose the uh, green. I wanted to change up. This one here, as you can see, is kind of a silver titanium. Of course, the Watch 7 is aluminum. The Ultra comes in titanium, but I didn't see spending the money for the Ultra. It, has a lot of great features, but it's got way more than what I would ever need. So I chose the 44 millimeter Galaxy Watch 7 and not the Ultra. And I decided, like I said, to go with the green because I thought it was gonna be a little bit of a change. So there's a watch. Now, the only thing I'm not really sure about when it comes to this here is when you cut it up side by side, you can see the bezel here protects a face. This doesn't have any bezel around. So I'm hoping that this not having that protective bezel around here is not going to lead to damage on the screen. Obviously, it has the you know, Gorilla Glass and all that good stuff. But as I found with my last Pixel Watch, which I inadvertently scraped up against a wall and left a nice scratch in it, it's not bulletproof. <laughs> or scratch proof honestly <laughs> so we'll have to see but um, one thing that they've done too is they have improved this sensor on the back for heart rate and things like that that it's a little bit bigger bulges out a little more and i think that's to help sit against the skin better i noticed sometimes this right here of course this type of band, you have certain holes I can put it in, but it's a little loose. So sometimes it doesn't accurately detect heart rate or things like that. And sometimes it'll lock itself because it thinks it's off my arm. So this band here is, it attaches by Velcro. So I can make it as loose or as tight as I want, which again, I, I wanted to change up a little bit. I've had this here for a long time and I kind of just change up a little bit and use a different style of band. So, so it's your regular wireless charger. And I would assume that the old charger will also work. But the only thing I'm not 100% sure of is because that looks like a much deeper indention on the charger for this to sit into better. 
So I don't know, we'll have to see. But if it does, it's nice to always have an extra. There's a new feature that they've done with the band that I really like, and I'm gonna show you here in a second as soon as I get this open. So this is the band, and actually looks really nice. That's a good looking color. I really like that. A little different. So as you can see, it's uh, Velcro. Adjust it to whatever length you want. But here's what I wanted to show you that they've done differently. And I can tell you from dealing with this watch and trying to get these pins right here, such a pain. See that right there? There's one on each end. You just push that button and it retracts those pins enough to where you can get it in the watch without having to fight it. Because honestly, trying to change a band in this watch here can be real hassle, uh, depending on the band. You have some bands that are continuous. They don't have where you can take them off. And when you're trying to deal with the little pins under here, it is a real pain. You can see what I'm talking about. When you're trying to get those pins out of here, uh, they do have this little lever, but it's a hassle at any rate. So let's compare. So there's the bottom of the five pro and there's the bottom of the seven. And you can see the advanced sensors that are on the bottom of the seven. And you can tell it's kind of, you can see how that bump there is not near as prominent as that one. So they definitely have done a lot of improvement in how the sensor makes contact with your skin. And I think that's going to help dramatically in making sure that you're able to detect heart rate and blood oxygen and ECG and all those things that it's able to detect. Another nice thing too is it's easy to flip this around depending on how you want the band to wrap around. Put my wife's on one way and she wanted it flipped around. She doesn't want the watch flipped around, but she wanted the band to wrap differently. So it's nice to be able to have some flexibility when it comes to that. So let's get this on here and see what we got. I think I'm gonna put it like this. So it'll be like that. So all you have to do is push this button right here and then you can fit that up in there. Boom, that's it. That was so easy and look, nice and secure. You can't get much easier than that. It's so simple. And so likewise, the same thing. And here you can just push the button with your index finger and slide it up into the watch area. Make sure it's clipped in place. Boom, done. You don't get much easier than that. Oh, that's nice. This little tab right here prevents the band from falling out of the loop right there. So that's cool. Let's put it on here. Nice. Again, I like how you can adjust it. Sometimes arm will swell or something like you're in the heat. And so it's nice that if you need to loosen it, you can just loosen it without having to only choose a specific hole. As you can see, I've kind of worn that part of the watch band down because that's usually where I'll wear it. Sometimes I'll move it around, but most of the time it's stuck right there. But I mean, this has been a great watch. I've loved this watch. Um, and if I hadn't been able to get this at such a fantastic deal, I probably would have been still using this, but this has been a great watch. So I'm gonna take it off my arm. I'm gonna get my phone and we're gonna pair it. I'm gonna walk through the pairing so you can see how easy that is. Because when I did my wife's last night, it was super simple. So I expect this to be exactly the same. So. I'm going to just do a screen recording on my phone of the pairing process because most of the pairing is done with the phone app and not necessarily on the watch. Obviously, you have to power the watch up first, but then it'll automatically say, hey, open up your SmartThings app and continue the process on the phone. So let's go ahead and get it powered up here real quick. Most of the time, these watches come with enough power in them to where you can go through the initial setup. Um, last night, I believe my wife's had like 75, 80% battery, which is more than enough. Pretty cool. So as you see right there, it's telling me to go to the phone. So let's go check the phone out. And as you can see, it's already got the pop-up for connecting this watch. So click connect. And one thing I sh wanted to look at first, 
I always want to make sure that you have a backup of, of that's fairly recent for your watch. So if you go into your Wear app and then you come down into Watch Settings and you go to Accounts and Backup, it'll tell you right here what the last backup is. So mine backed up last night, or I should say this morning. So I have a current backup. So that's awesome. So even though I said connect, it didn't pop up the window. So let's click add new device. And sure, let's say backup. So add new device, add watch seven. It showed available devices. So it gives me a number that corresponds with the phone. So I'm gonna confirm. It's downloading some updates. 151 megs, of course that's super fast. So of course, going to accept all the terms and conditions. You click continue. And it's gonna ask you a few other things that if you wanted to change what you allow, but I allow all, so I wanted to allow them, allow. And of course the watch right now just continues to say, check your phone to complete setup. That's why I'm saying that I wanted to just do the screen recording so you could see what this process is because there's really nothing to see on the watch. One thing I wanted to point out while that was working is it's kind of hard to tell, but the watch face itself, you can see how much bezel and how much edging there is on that watch face and how there's not really that much on this one. You can't really see under the screen, but there's a little bit of a bezel that goes around. Technically, this screen on this new 7 is bigger than what's on the 5, not by a whole lot. But there's so much metal and so much other material around the actual visual screen on the 5. This actually gives me more. So sign into my Google account. Here's the old thumbprint. And yes, I agree. Of course, I'm getting my alerts from <laughs> signing into the account. Another really nice feature about this watch is it has a uh, the GPS is actually a dual band GPS, so it should be much more accurate in location detection than what the other watch was. So automatic watch backup, yes. That's another thing Samsung does such a phenomenal job of is when you buy a new phone or watch, the smart switch application that you see it talking about here does a fantastic job of moving your data and information and settings and there's really very little setup to do after the fact, more so on a phone than it would be on the watch, but it's so convenient. So yes, we wanna allow those permissions. So that's nice, it's even gonna bring over my watch face, and so we're gonna restore. So it's bringing over all the information from the old watch to the new watch, settings and everything. So obviously there's some things I'm gonna have to go in there and tweak. I know we had to do that with my wife's watch because some of the things are a little bit different, but this right here is bringing over like everything, which is phenomenal. So while that's updating, let's open up this new, this other band. So while that's doing its migration, let's open up this other band and check it out. That's real nice. So this is the athleisure. I don't know what that means, but this is kind of a uh, fabric band as well, but it's also kind of like rubbery. So I'm not really sure what it's made of, but it's nice. I don't know that I'm gonna use it right now. Maybe at some point I'll use it, but it also has the same little buttons on it to where it's easy to just pop them in and out. So you can easily test it. It's kind of a strange feel to it. It's kind of like, rubber fabric <laughs> but it was nice they gave you another watch band that was kind of unexpected i did not know they were doing that so it looks like we're through apps and permissions music images which i didn't have a lot of music images on the phone itself done with settings restoring home screen all right home screen done watch face is done next set your wearing preferences left yep that's exactly how i wear it I don't want to create a workout routine or your watch continuously to get a detailed energy score. This is something that's new. It's part of the Samsung health, but that feature, this um, energy score was not available on the other watch. Understand sleep. And I did use that. So what's advanced measurement? Nice. I did snore detection and that gives you a couple of those things. Uh, next. 
So this is another thing too that's really cool is the, this double pinch and I'm gonna have to get all that set up, but that's really cool. I was watching some other people who got in the watch in that were testing it out and it looks like it's pretty accurate. So it looks like you can pinch twice to answer calls, dismiss alerts, play or pause music, take a photo, which taking a photo with the, with the camera app is open. That's pretty cool. I'm gonna have to give that a shot. I think that's probably what I'll be using it for because I don't know that I would tap my fingers to answer a phone call, but I don't know. We'll see. Press the home button on your watch five times to call emergency. That's kind of cool. Hope I don't have emergency. You're all set. So in here, you can see I still have the Watch 5 Pro, which I'll be disconnecting after I make sure everything's good on 7. And on the watch itself, it's asking me to take a tour, so I'm gonna skip that. That's really nice, the uh, April Fib, the ECG stuff, it's pretty cool. Went right over all my custom tiles that I had originally, plus there's some additionals. Well, I'm gonna go through these a little bit later. Um, as I said, you're probably gonna have to do some tweaking. I know I had to do that with um, some of my wife's stuff. And there are a few things that I'm gonna have to adjust later, but I'll probably get into some of these more specific settings uh, a little later on. I'm gonna have to cut through some of that for the lock thing. Not really sure what I wanna use that for, but that could be a really cool feature. So there you go. Nice. And bye. It's kind of sad. You've been a good watch, but you've been replaced. So I'll actually put down into the uh, description some links to the watches. I don't know if Samsung has them on Amazon yet. Obviously, I'm not a Samsung affiliate, but if they don't have them on Amazon, I'll definitely link to the um, Samsung's website because uh, it's really nice. I really, really like it. It actually feels much better on my wrist than the other watch did. It doesn't feel as bulky. You can definitely tell the thickness. This is much heavier. My wife really likes hers. She likes the way it feels. It's light on her wrist. And so she's super happy with it as well. But I'm really stoked that it came in early. And I'm gonna be doing a longer term review on it. So I'm gonna use it for a few days and then we will kind of get back into what my thoughts are and some of the pluses and minuses and maybe I'll have more pluses than minuses. I think I will. <laughs> but if you have any questions, comments, hit me up in the comments section. And uh, if you've been on the fence to get one, I can definitely say that so far it is nice. Definitely premium. So go get you one. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next video.